understand it. And they almost seem grown up as well. They act like they seem like women rather than um, anorexic uh, androgenes. And um, yeah, they seem so fucking cheerful. <laughs> um, yeah, it was, uh, it was sort of being thrown in at, at the deep end uh, for me. It was a wonderful moment. I remember backstage, I'd never been backstage at a fashion show before, and I was trying to be you know, terribly uh, polite, which was a huge mistake, so nobody else was being polite. And uh, now I remember there was a moment, and I was just like, I can't believe this. And I was looking through it, and it was Kate Moss, basically naked, with a nose ring, blowing smoke rings through her nose ring. I, I, you know, there is a guard. And then, I, well, there would be a god if you remembered to turn the camera on rather than just being mesmerized by Kate Moss playing smoke ring. You know, I had the one thing, the trouble with video, you see it, you kind of think this is great, and you go, oh no, it's the blood thing that we want. And no, I didn't get it. So, um, okay, any questions? Kate didn't really, was not, you know, she's very shy. 
She wanted to do movies. She's resisted. I mean, she wants to have a million offers, right? And so I, you know, I, had a, I knew her. And I said, we had a meeting, and I said, listen, actually, just be you and me and maybe one other person. And it's no big deal. And actually, there won't be any lights on either. And it looked great. It was great on skin tone, you know, and all that sort of stuff. So um, I answer your question, just the sort of marriage between the technology that's available at the low end and the, the freedom that that gives you, and the freedom that that then gives you with um, the actors, the models, whatever, whatever we call them. You know. So um, then the internet was a logical extension of that. You know. So if you're not shooting on high, high definition, then the internet's not a problem, because it is low definition. And actually, I've become addicted, like pretty much everybody else, to YouTube. And I've seen some amazing images on YouTube. You know, I'm doing a kind of project now where most of the stuff I'm gathering is shot on phones or whatever, you know, and I'll put four or five images on screen at the same time. If the image is strong, and if the storyline really pushes through, then you really don't care. You know, if something drastic happens in the world and somebody shot it on a mobile phone, you don't hear people kind of go, oh, the quality of that image of that plane crash, did you see that? It was kind of blurry. It's like out of focus at one point, you know. Like, I couldn't watch it. I just couldn't watch it. Because the tech, no one gives a fuck. And we have some, we've moved into this new sphere of, Yet the fashion industry, which is based on money, film industry, which is based on profit and money, continues to kind of subscribe to the idea of you've got to spend a lot of money on the equipment. Otherwise, we're going to look really fucking dumb if you've got this like a little plastic camera. You're not going to look pro, man. You know, so uh, you've got to get a big camera and you've got to get at least five people around it who look like they know that they're doing brain surgery, which is the thing I absolutely hate about the film business. You know what I mean? I want to just be there with the actor. I don't want those motherfuckers in the way, you know. Tell it's a little bit soft, you know, the light or this, you know. Mm, you know. So the internet seemed to be like the low, you know, the absolutely obvious first cousin of low end camera work. You know. We've got time. If anybody wants, yeah. Kate said, already that long models. <laughs> um, and people are very, you know, uh, so I, playing with sound to me is like more than 50% of the film anyway. So as we saw with some of the films yesterday, you know, and um, post-production, things you can do on sound so easily now. And so I wanted to play with, she's talking about it's like being two characters. So one character has a much deeper, more kind of powerful voice, and then Kate has her own voice. And... Um, Therefore, the two characters seem to be kind of delineated in sound in that way. Yeah. Yes. Talking about sound, uh, the Indian Westwood video, the audience sound. Yeah. Was that actually from the, from the show? Well, two things. One is um, Vito actually went up to sort of like, it should be very, very loud, the sound on that, because she's, you know, Vivian's really into big, big sound, classical sound, you know. And again, that's. That was a shock when, you know, you're so used to hearing it was kind of robotic. And to hear this heavy romanticism, it should be much louder. So I recorded the real sound and, of course, then discovered that Vivian had absolutely not any copyright authorization for any of the tracks she'd used, which, of course, were married to the sound, amazing sound of uh, paparazzi and everyone screaming. It was incredibly noisy. And the photographers were going nuts and shouting, uh, Barcelona. What the fuck is that? Does anybody know what Barcelona means? They kept shouting Barcelona, but it's obviously a code. Anyway, um, so I did this lovely edit, you know, of all the natural sound, which I prefer, and then made a few phone calls and went, absolutely not. She'd chosen Herbert von Karajan and the Berliner Philharmonic for about four of the tracks. The Berliner, the Berliner do not give um, rights to anybody. It was a non-contest, you know, so uh, we had to get alternative versions, and then I had to do an eight you know, a post-production session with a bunch of people shouting Barcelona, basically. You know? <laughs> so it's my one regret, because I love the married sound to the, to the track. Um, uh, my qu first of all, that was brilliant. So much fun. Um, my question is, do you think there's anything in particular about the Vivian Westwood show that made the film what it was, or something in, in her work that you're drawn to, or could have it been another design or another show? I'm sure, I mean, I, I was aware of Vivian and what she was doing, and that it was, uh, you know, that kind of her peak, I think, at that 
that time. And Romani, my, my uh, daughter, sort of said, uh, you've got to check it out. She's doing these outrageous bombs and you know, the bustiers and the whole thing. I really think it's kind of an important show. But she's really excited about it. So, um, I mean, I, I, what did I know? I mean, and since then, I've, you know, I've seen a, a, a lot more fashion, being kind of underwhelmed by a lot of it, you know. <laughs> That's all Boudicca's show, would run away like that. So, some, you know, sometimes you, I, you know, I love fashion. I really I continue to, to look for beauty, you know, in the fashion world. And like everything else culturally right now, also see a lot of crap and a lot of abusive imagery and so on, you know. Again, just money problem. So I'm sure at that time, if I didn't know a little bit more about fashion, somebody would say, well, this was happening. And I also worked with Billy Forsyth in Frankfurt Ballet, and they were working a lot with designers, so that was being incorporated into dance and movement, you know. And, um, and obviously, the way they moved, also I found very beautiful, you know. But actually, you know, A, because Vivian had a theatrical concept by that use of music. And I know as a filmmaker that the minute you put a certain type of music very loud, someone's going to move in a different way. The minute you use either <coughs> techno or something like that, you're going to get a dead response. I am dead. I am walking. I am just a kind of robot. And, you know, that's a pretty prevalent right now. You know, and then they try and use a bit of kind of faux romanticism. But this is like just fully blown, unashamed, um, 19th century romantic music, so it did really affect the way they were kind of, they were walking, you know, as I said, and smiling. Any more? Good. Thank you.